so very good morning to all of you to all the participants and my cgj colleagues and good morning uh, uh, ma'am and thamija ma'am good morning now, good morning and we... welcome to dr katayal yes please continue yeah ma'am so today we have uh, ms pena d katayal as a guest speaker in our azadi ka amrit mahotsav and first of all i would like to take this opportunity to introduce her she is a post graduate holder with the 22 years of experience in the field of pharmacy and she also possesses numerous certifications in the field like disaster management leprosy management and adolescent healthcare to name a few in her 22 years of experience she has managed pscs been the head of stores management the lead facilitators of dg eh uh, ehs scheme launched by delhi government in the pandemic as a covid management task force and many more integral assignments her works ranges outside her job where she makes sure to spend time on community service being a strong environmentalist she spreads awareness to resident welfare associations pharmacy associations and everyone around her to protect the environment by giving practical handy tips and monetary helping associations to grow more trees and work on compositing of green garbage and she is a successful educator too who has worked with numerous psychiatrist psychologists and children of special needs including her son who is now studying in abroad so prerna ji uh, you're most welcome and over to you now thank you thank you so much kaval ji so um let us start with the topic today let us discuss with pharmaceutical pollution and sustainable development goals so today's topic is pharmaceutical pollution and sustainable development goals are they going the right way are we really working to control the pharma waste generating in each day so let us today uh, see see a few aspects of uh, this type of waste which is very sensitive and uh, needs a responsible uh, stakeholders to take care of so we all know the waste water treatment plants actually do not uh, uh, they are not developed to remove pharmaceutical residues from the water and uh, consequently these pharmaceutical residues are detected in many ecosystems aquatic system the soil and uh, um, they to name a few and uh, these ecosystems are actually uh, directly indirectly is uh, affecting our health how it is affecting i'll go in in my uh, further uh, slides i'll take that in detail but uh, right now to understand this uh, complex environmental problem let us uh, first see what uh, what actually uh, what particular points is drawing our attention to right now so uh, in the just a moment so uh, the highlights of this uh, presentation is and uh, this is an evaluation of the achievement of sustainable development goals made by 17 goals which are made by uh, un and um, considering uh, pharmaceutical pollution as a case study and um, how indian legislation is actually working for disposable uh, disposing the pharmaceutical waste and uh, uh, reflecting our concerning alternatives for better management and aiming to reduce this pharma waste pharma pollution so in these three main aims uh, i had come to know when i researched about it that uh, it is still a big problem we are going against sustainable development goals and uh, the regulations which is there but uh, they are, that is not working properly there is a lack in the system there are several loopholes going on that i see in my workplace also and uh, uh, many countries have seen global impacts including the india particularly delhi has also seen and himachal there was a case and um, how we are affected it we we can go into detail and the solution uh, i i had tried to integrate a few solutions to my level best but i i think uh, there will be much more we can do over it 
to reduce this drug pollution. And the next is uh, uh, for understanding this topic, actually, I thought, ki, let me break this into a few question forms so that uh, we all keep on thinking and we make memory tags to retain and register it in our minds. So uh, first question arises in my mind is let us know what is pharmaceutical waste. So pharmaceutical waste is ranging from unused drugs, expired drugs, over the counter medications which we buy directly painkillers and all that personal care products, the sunscreens, the lotions and creams and ointments we use, lab reagents, test kits and laboratory waste that uh, come out after the uh, investigation process is uh, carrying on. All and the particularly the major amount is come uh, major amount of pharma waste is coming from pharma industries. That is the important thing to know. We need to have strong regulations for that. Now uh, the next is uh, why we are so much concerned. Why the emphasis is uh, focusing on pharma waste? What are the environmental impacts, or uh, why it is so important to handle pharmaceutical waste with uh, such sensitization? So um, research and studies have shown medication res residues leach into water systems and they are posing serious threats to wildlife, aquatic animals, hormones, antibiotics, chemo chemotherapy drugs are uh, found in the water samples. And all these have been linked in severe development problems in fishes and frogs. And ultimately, they are entered through aquatic, uh, aquatic life to human food chain and uh, how this is happening this is a slow and gradual unnoticed process how this is happening let us uh, go on and study into deep like uh, earlier uh, what in our uh, whatever waste pharma waste is uh, generating in our households we used to throw that in the dustbin or we used to uh, flush that in the toilet and throw away so, by, so that we are getting rid of that. But ultimately, it is harming in our environment. And this harm is again coming to us. This is a cycle we are going in. So uh, nowadays, drinking water supply has been found with medication thrown recklessly, even the heavy metals. Uh, from past, I think, uh, 15 years, it is my practice to throw a little water when I start the tap in the morning because uh, once i had uh, learned from a lecture or i think from a book that uh, heavy metals like mercury they uh, they come and stand on the tip of the tap so it is my practice to throw away that little water drinking water before storing it for the drinking purposes so like this way we are in our day-to-day -day life affected with this and uh, let me share with you uh, with you all a very shocking prediction by WHO that by 2025 or 27, 85% of Indian households will have cancer patients. And uh, in my healthcare facilities, we have seen a shooting spike in the cancer cases, which is evident that this pollution is definitely affecting us and it's really very important to take action right here and right now so in the second slide i'm just continuing that with the environmental impact only this slide is showing that there is a silent pandemic going on and we all are just uh, shutting our eyes and not able to see that or we are able to see that but we are not taking appropriate timely actions for that and that silent pandemic is actually a serious threat to the mankind because of the drug resistant pathogens found in water in in our water bodies and in the Yamuna beds, particularly if I talk about Delhi, these superbugs are nothing but the uh, uh, but the that only bacteria and virus who are fed on the antibiotics we have thrown recklessly into the, into the water. So when this untreated hospital waste water is which is laden with the antibiotics is thrown recklessly in the water, the hotspot for these superbugs is generated. That is their favorable condition. They are sustaining on that uh, food what we are throwing as antibiotics. Yamuna bed is one of, one of the example and uh, the bug found here is named as New Delhi bug, New Delhi super bug. 
and we Delhiites are uh, actually getting getting our daily supply of daily veggies and fruits from Yamuna bed only. This is a very high alarming thing. A uh, few years back, I have read this column in the newspaper also that the vegetables and fruits we are eating they have super bugs they have they have traces of heavy metals and but we have no option other than to have it and uh, the covid pandemic actually was a superb example to understand the delicate interconnection between animal environment and human ecosystem how we all are interconnected with each other we can see that we can we can see or we all humans we animals and how they are like it was a this virus was basically found in animals now it mutated and it is affecting humans see how we are connected and uh, this will continue and it will be tested by the climate change. The degradation of health of these three ecosystems will actually contribute to the spread and emergence of new pandemics. This is for sure. The new pandemics are coming because we people are really recklessly handling the things that is going on in present time. But this silent pandemic, what we are, uh, we are talking about here is in the COVID pandemic, actually this pandemic is not highlighted. COVID was highlighted because of the severe mortal rates. But this pandemic, the silent pandemic going on, which is called antimicrobial resistance. Actually, uh, a study has shown that this AMR, antimicrobial resistance, has actually induced up to 10 million global deaths every year by 2050 and forced 28 million people into poverty. So this is the data um, we are, I'm sharing with you. Further, our health systems will be overburdened because drug will lose their efficacy due to AMR and uh, more stronger and stronger drugs is to be developed to control the MDR cases, multiple drug resistant cases. So to control or avoid this situation, there is a severe need of taking action at this priority, uh, priority basis on this time. So uh, my next slide is about antibiotics in our rivers. Again, uh, it is the environmental impact. Uh, the irrational use of antibiotics in human medication, agriculture, aquaculture, livestock, poultry, throughout the India. Uh, actually, this has been addressed as a multiple sectoral approach. This is a multiple, so many sectors are involved in this and we have to work on all of them so that a collective response is generated. The emphasis is on promotion of appropriate usage of antimicrobials in patients and in uh, aquaculture, agriculture, poultry also, and um, uh, controlling the uh, multiple drug resistant uh, cases in hospitals and healthcare facilities. These are actually termed as antimicrobial stewardship practices. And in our health, in my healthcare facility, we are, we all are working towards it. We actually promote the rational use of antibiotics given prescribed to the patients. And uh, I hope that um, in other sectors also, like in agriculture, in poultry, livestock, they are also doing that. Similarly, the misuse of antibiotics in aquaculture, poultry uh, needs strict measures to be taken. A uh, few example I have uh, studied, that is the ban on cholestin, that is an antibiotic used in poultry. So this is banned. So you can see they are working, but uh, I am definitely sure of there are loopholes because um, India needs education on ground level so that all these situations to be get controlled of. So the area of concern is the strategies to tackle environmental antibacterial resistance and uh, to have regulations limiting antibi antibiotic concentration in hospital wastewater and effluents from pharma industries so now uh, in all over india across the india only 45 percent of hospitals have bought uh, their antibiotic water concentration treatment facilities so this is a gruesome issue that only 45 percent the data is quite less and the amount is quite much so uh, and in the absence of sops 
standard operating protocols. The high concentration of antibiotics in pharmaceutical effluents actually get discharged into water bodies, thereby the chain is again formed that is a grave threat to animals and humans. Of late, several instances of pharmaceutical pollution have been reported, like the Baddi Pharma hub in Himachal Pradesh, uh, where this pharmaceutical pollution was um, found and uh, the action has been taken by CPCB and uh, the antibiotic pollution in Sirsa River. So the, the uh, central bodies acting on it is Central Pollution on Control Board. I, I'm sure you all will be aware of CPCB and Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change is also working on this. And uh, along with the state pollution boards, they should come at our same platform to work on because I think central bodies have better capacities and resources to work on this. Along with this, uh, the um, antibiotic pollution and along with this, the uh, what how we can control AMR is through the sanitation and good hygiene practices clean drinking water. We can actually uh, control on this antimicrobial resistant cases in our hospitals and uh, work health places. So now let's uh, move on to the next slide. That is superbugs that are res resistant to last resort. Uh, sorry. Uh, okay. No, uh, that is, uh, this slide is actually in continuation with the earlier one. Now, my next question is, uh, when this is so important to dispose of this pharmaceutical waste in a particular way, then what is the exactly, what scientific way is there to segregate and work on, on the um, zero level? Like in my pharmacy, I used to do this. So, uh, let us uh, now understand that there are six, steps to dispose of pharma waste. First step is, uh, it is mentioned here in the bullets form, segregate pharmaceutical waste from biohazardous waste so that it doesn't end up in a landfill and ensure that it is not going in the red container or red bag. The waste, biohazardous waste is going on with the red, red container and the pharmaceutical waste should not be mixed with that. And uh, the next is, pull out all controlled substances. Controlled substances are like Schedule H drugs, which are opiates and benzodiazepines, whatever, chemo drugs. These should be transported and um, uh, burnt in the insulation, not to be thrown in a landfill or something else. And pull out any trace of chemotherapy waste. Again, the chemo drugs in very trace amount, they can affect us. And even the empty IV tubing, empty medication vials, and even the gloves used by the staff while administrating chemotherapy, that should go in the yellow container and should be burnt completely in the insulation. It should not be thrown in the landfills. And the fourth is pull out any hazardous waste, drugs like warfarin, mitomycin. These are placed in black containers and that required very specific disposable. We cannot throw it in the dustbin or in the toilet flush. We cannot throw it like that. Next is packaging, whatever is left that should be removed, the aluminum plastic that contains the tablets and all that. And everything should be, uh, the actually the pharma waste should be disposed in white container with blue lids, it, is, it was mentioned here. Otherwise, pharma waste, which is sensitive, which is biohazardous, they all have to go in yellow bag and in the insulation. These are the non-hazardous uh, things, the packing material and all that. Now, next is, uh, it is very important to have a contract with licensed biomedical waste disposable service. Uh, after all the precautions we are taking, we are segregating the pharma waste and everything. Uh, we need a knowledgeable partner to dispose of uh, the pharma waste we are handling over to him. And in Delhi, with my health facilities, Biotech Waste Solution is working with us. And um, uh, I should mention here, that uh, we are following all the protocols, we are following everything, but even then I see there are few loopholes besides all the precautions. So authorities, I will um, really raise my voice. I, I always go to my uh, bosses and tell them that this, this thing is going wrong and that thing is going wrong. So we must take a strict compliance uh, with these rules. That is very much needed. So uh, next is um, how India is handling its waste care. 
with pharmaceutical care so in india uh, actually bmw management rules bmw is biomedical waste bmw management rules came into existence in 2016 its objective was to properly manage the per day bmw from healthcare facilities across the country so uh, the ngt the national green tribunal has uh, directed various authorities to ensure the compliance for bmw facilities in the country central level pe uh, central pollution control board is working and uh, they are uh, they ensures the strict compliance for bmw rules and scientific disposable of disposal of waste at state level chief secretaries of states uh, see for the compliance and ensure that authorization and uh, is secured by every healthcare facility in their jurisdiction and all the health facilities are adhering to the norms at district level dms are working district magistrates are working and district environmental plans are working cpcm actually make contract with the licensed bmw disposable service and ensure for safe transportation and disposable waste is segregated as per the color coding given by them we can see in this slide black green blue red and uh, yellow uh, as we say that uh, precaution is always better than the cure the mass awareness of the six r's uh, is really uh, useful to reduce the bend we we can see in this slide uh, we will again further see in the in the last slide also but um, if we follow these six r's we can actually reduce the waste we are generating and in pharma waste also we can uh, actually reduce and reuse the pharma products also it is not for generalized purpose it is for pharma purpose also and in this slide particularly um, a lady is shown here Uh, because uh, in our mindset only the lady is doing the household job so we can see here at the zero ground level the segregation is done garden waste is separated hazardous waste waste is separated sanitary waste debris dry waste wet, everything can be segregated on the basic level but for this we need to educate our maids we need to make uh, raise our voice and make awareness among the masses so the next thing is um, is coming here is when when we are following all these rules even after following bmw rules there are some concerns coming up so the first concern what i have seen during the covid pandemic is the challenge of uh, doing the scientific disposable of the generated because at that time there was a huge waste generated the and that waste has to be incinerated because we want to curb the infection the spread of virus and uh, that time that was a challenge for our authorities to work and uh, we really did very well i would really appreciate delhi government for that because i have seen people working day and night for that and um, uh, but there are uh, few limitations we have and uh, there is a scope of much more work we can do on this uh, waste management scientific disposable of uh, this sensitive and uh, dangerous waste second uh, what i have seen concern is this the poor compliance among the staff among the healthcare workers also among the states and all the the the, the hierarchy goes on the from lower to the higher from higher to the lower so for this strict actions with the positive and negative consequences means incentive based or uh, punishment based uh, should be given and uh, cmes to be conducted as a cmb cmes are conducting in our department actually the biomedical trainings are going on on regular basis but i think all of the staff should be educated not only the handler is educated so awareness is very much needed and compliance is needed third concern what i have seen is non segregation i have seen the segregation uh, is actually we can see on our, in our household also how much we are segregating so that is an issue and that is adding to the pharma pollution and uh, fourth is again the awareness campaign we need to con uh, conduct appropriate initiatives to educate our people 
through the doordarshan all india radio social media platform and everything like the advertisement we are getting in everything now this thing should be raised this voice should be raised for the pharma based also so uh, the next are the uh, next topic is factors which are uh, influencing environment sustainability in pharma industry we are now talking about pharma because industries because that is the place we need to address the most that is the place where a huge amount of waste is coming and uh, actually climate change have uh, given us this data how much pollution we are creating and um, climate change we, we can see in april there is such a hot climate we are facing so we need to take serious action about it and uh, the other thing sustainability in governance that is the key area corruption bribery ethics everything risk management these all are governance issues which need to be corrected and to be worked on uh we know that pharma industry actually is uh, producing a significant amount of waste and greenhouse gases too apart from using huge volume of water this high energy consumption diverse supply chain environmental pollution are few environmental factors that need to be addressed by the industry and uh, uh, provide uh, provide us with the sustainable solution so uh, by improving production process these are the solution that by if we improve production process if we optimize supply chain the industry can enhance the value and also ensure environmental sustainability now the industry can also ensure social sustainability uh, like uh, nowadays few mnc's are actually working on csr their social responsibilities they are taking they are actually taking care, uh, care of one uh, one sect of the area like in healthcare in our healthcare system there are few pharma companies we are which are coming to us and uh, they are saying ki let us put a camp over here to spread the awareness of cancer and uh, let us people um, go through the investigations for free let us help them so we are they are actually doing this social sustainability but we need to do more and more because we are a, a country of huge population so uh, doing 1% or 2% won't affect now when at least 50% uh, people are if industries is participating then we can see a sustainable difference in that so by if they provide access to affordable medication and treatments for the poor like the generic medicine shops um, recently have been opened so that way we can help in our society also so sustainability and governance actually should focus on product quality and there should be an open association with healthcare professionals and uh, patients like i th i uh, like i mentioned that few companies are coming to us to put the camp to serve the people so the this association open association is very much needed and uh, companies should adopt these ethical standards and uh, make a business model which is uh, patient oriented hai na they can take the help of digital technology nowadays um, so that would be great and uh, government policies that is that can play a major role in ensuring the compliance with the industries if um, uh, policies are um, made and regulations are strict then we can control actually this issue can be controlled government can provide incentive for implementing sustainable practices to them and they are doing on their bit but we need to do more and more this is what i am emphasizing on so firm policies strict and quick action consistent behavior can change the show and we need to awaken our society industry and governance to take timely action so that our future generations sh should not suffer now the next slide is uh, why incineration is the best for disposable of medicines see we all know the traces are being found in surface ground and drinking water around the world and it is a potentially damaging environmental effect it is giving for the future generation 
and they are affecting the health of million of us. So, uh, and we are very well aware that minuscule concentration of chemicals can actually be detrimental for aquatic health and for human health and development. So, uh, whenever the waste is segregated and incinerated, pharma waste is segregated and incinerated, it ensures it ensures that the complete combustion of all the chemicals are happening, whatever is there. That is why incineration is best for the disposable of medication so that no trace is left, no composition, no chemical composition is left. And this process is actually recommended by uh, health and monitoring organization like WHO, UN, DEA, etc. So there are few pictures of medical incinerators also. You can see that uh, there are, these are special medical incinerators who do this job. So now the next thing, our duty, what we can do. Basically, uh, if we have rights, we have duties too as a citizen. So besides BMW guideline, what is to be done to control pharma waste, to uh, minimize the pharma waste? So um, one practice is what, what industry and uh, healthcare and the patient uh, chain we can do. And then uh, in other slide, I'll discuss the general we can do in our daily day-to-day -day practices. Uh, so waste minimizing measures should be followed to achieve sustainable supply and use of drug. In this pictorial, what you are seeing in your screen, it is mentioned there that health authorities should create awareness, positive or negative enforcement. And then manufacturers should extend expiration dates of their medicines. They can make a small packaging size. Then distributors should optimize stock management, reduce minimal shelf life for distribution, then come the prescribers or the doctors. They should consider prescription quantity and uh, uh, shorter prescription duration and rationally use the drugs. Then comes the role of pharmacists. Pharmacists should efficiently manage their stocks, efficient uh, preparation and dispensing, redispensing, and use of unused medication should be practiced. And then the last uh, stakeholder is patient. Patient should be conscious in ordering medication and aware and involved in waste minimizing measures. And from uh, now, this was something a chain what we are using and handling. Now, in our day to day li uh, life, what I feel is the first and foremost intangible thing is sustainable human behavior. This is the basic way of life. When we are responsible enough of what we are doing, we can actually um, control the issues. We can control the problems. We can control the waste. Uh, so it is our basic way of life. We will be able to bounce back from adversity to a great progress as a whole. But uh, there should be a, a regular and consistent effort for that. As an AI, one day I'm doing such thing. I'm not using polybag. I'm not you wasting this. Day. I'm not wasting the other day. It is going on. This this won't work. So when we work on zero ground level um, to educate our maids, rag pickers, like in the last meeting I heard Mr. Kuldeep Singh Ji, he shared that uh, maids and rag pickers are being uh, educated on the issues when they segregate the landfills and all. This was, I was really impressed with that thing. That That is the thing we need to have. We need, and uh, uh, we need to have that platform to raise awareness with each and every person we are handling with. And uh, the next thing, what I feel like uh, being a pharmacist in my healthcare facilities, actually, how I take care of the medications, how I being a pharmacist, how I am doing, like I take care of the medicines uh, on the first in and first out basis. I uh, take care of the sun exposure, of the moisture, pest, room temperature, and uh, pharmaceutical, the refrigerating drugs are kept in refrigerators, insulin, eye drops, etc. And I maintain a expiry register. And regular screening of the expiry dates actually help me in uh, screening and sorting better if something is left. Storing and labeling in the pharmacy is really helpful. There are so many things we can do in our pharmacy on our level, on our level best. And during the disposable disposal also, if we are following those six points of disposable, we are actually uh, helping all the cycle 
to to curb down and the other idea which is not implemented in our delhi government right now but i want that to be that uh, the medications which are not being used the unused medications uh, actually we can uh, donate to uh, donate them before expiry to charitables or gurudwaras and um, for further reusing and dispensing so i uh, raised this um, voice of mine on this platform also uh, so that any protocol or any policy can be made so that about to expire drugs are donated somewhere for for further use if it is not being used in our houses in our um, in our pharmacies so uh, thank you all and um, thank you so much and uh, let's spread awareness we all are actually champions of action architects and change makers of sustainable global society so thank you thank you uh, very much for this opportunity um, over to you kamal ji yeah thank you very much prerna i'm dr bindija with the skill council okay thank you ma'am uh, yeah and this was you know this your presentation has been a very different topic which we have been handling all these days we have been talking of renewables we have been talking of you know uh, biomass energy we have been talking of many such things but yeah. your you know when mr pb singh told me that you want to speak on pharmaceutical waste yeah. so i said yes yeah, she should come and she should educate us and tell us what yeah. this sector needs this sector needs a lot Yes. i have also been in the delhi government you know when rakesh mehta was there and okay. if you remember the climate change uh, initiative which he had taken and the biomedical industry was one thing which he was focusing okay there was a rare i don't know you are you are there since when in uh, delhi in the uh, from 2009 i am with delhi government okay so then you you must be knowing uh, the, the initiatives taken for the setting yeah. up the bio incineration and and for treating the biomedical waste uh, even the the bmw guidelines came to us yeah yeah that is the time na and even uh. the slaughterhouse waste and all that they were also to be treated so i feel do you you had said that 45% of the you know uh, antibiotic uh, treatment plants are there so what about in delhi do you have those uh, you know the the plants the plants for uh, reducing the antibiotic uh, mine, waste mine is a uh, health facility actually uh, like in few hospitals in delhi gb pant has its incineration center gb pant actually uh, actually they can accommodate all their gen waste generated over there so because i have worked with gb pant i know about that and there are few hospitals more which are actually accommodating their waste on them themselves no. but rest we have that um, uh, biotic waste management solutions they take okay. our waste and they dispose of in their incinerators okay 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 because most of the central government hospitals also they have incineration you can't have uh, you know a just a health facility without an incineration because yeah. no no have to sterilize the primary one yeah the primary yeah. one yeah. Uh, basically you can say primary yeah. to secondary level pe we are there now yeah Uh, and, uh, uh, the facilities is always there in the tertiary care because the it okay. requires a large space it requires ki opd bhi itna bada hoga uh has a patient rose wahan pe hoga ya ipd hoga r is an opd basis only r is a clinic multi speciality clinic with opd uh, services okay. so Not this is in delhi delhi secretary at only na i think so yeah it is the dhs directorate of health services yeah 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 and uh, one thing more i the point you said about environment uh, environment sustainability and and, and governance so yeah. the linkage between that that is very important yeah. and as health officers you people have to continuously focus yes. on this continuously keep emphasizing yes you know, because yeah. because uh, awareness reaching out to people talking to them we have a lot of training courses where we educate the sanitary workers but mm-hmm. i don't think we have anything for the biomedical uh, you know uh, trainings because uh, whether that no, comes it, under it, our trainings yeah. are going on in our facilities but only uh, the nursing staff and uh, only the the people who are mainly handling the bmw that are trained pharmacists okay. are not trained as per my the very few ones are trained like i didn't had any bmw training till date and um, i just studied on my own because this is my area of interest so i started 
so uh, there are few uh, loopholes i said i already told you that each and every person in the facility should be trained because uh, in my facility only if i uh, talk i have seen people uh, throwing recklessly all the lab reagents into the drain i just stopped him the, please don't do this we have the facility we have biotech waste solution just hand over to him that is the only thing we can we have to do is just we have to just maintain our register that this particular that thing is, was gone to that place that's yeah. it so But that is uh, very dangerous that is very dangerous they should yeah. you should have those uh, you should label your labs and all that and write and uh -huh. you know i am also we are actually doing all this but mm. people are not sensitized that is why i emphasize now human sustainable behavior before anything else before anything else we need to introspect ourselves what we are doing yaar ye kya kar rahe hain hum ultimately this is coming to us only na pani again it is getting clean and get we are only drinking it now what we are throwing if we take it that way na that this is our mother earth and we have to protect him this is our thing our planet our place to live then we will take care of like we take care of our homes we can take care of our uh, health facilities also we can take care of an environment also our society also this is the human behavior the basic need uh, is to uh, think on matlab uh, everyone has to respect oneself what we what they are doing because kahan tak aap pakloge kisi ko jab aap ki notice pe aap ye hona chahiye na i am also a microbiologist i have worked on encephalitis i have worked on you know in national institute of virology wow. gone for trainings there so uh, you know it was it was you can't even touch the virus you can't you you are already you know your apparels your kit everything is so you have to be so careful that i don't understand how people can throw solutions in the drains and how they can just dispose yeah. it off like this so mm -hmm. i think there you have to be more strict and any help yeah. you want from yeah, the skill counsel and i really corrected that person and yeah. then all all the solution was handed over to the waste management uh, uh, and so when you have a system of collection corrected that person yeah uh, so that is there that is very good i uh, kamal are there any other questions or anybody has any other questions i only want to applaud and i want to encourage you to kindly continue doing what you are and of course connecting with people that is very important you know talking is very important sometimes we think that they know don't know even if they know you should tell again to do it do it this way you know it is one way of checking them yeah yes kamal Yes, yeah. ma'am. Um, Mr. P. B. Uh, P. B. Singh sir has some. Uh, yeah, P. Yeah, I want to thank P. B. Singh. He has yeah. got a very good speaker. Yeah, please, yeah. P. B. Singh, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I just, uh, Prana ma'am, ko ye batana chahta hu ki ye S. C. G. J. Jo hai, or time to time, uh, uh, technicians and other staffs ko jo waste water treatment plants ke hote hain, unko uh, training wagera dete rehte hain, hum log facilitate karte hain. फार्मास्यूटिकल इंडस्ट्री दैट आई डोंट नो that mm -hmm. because everybody has not set up an etp they don't have a treatment facility that it can be done reduced and then send it to the this thing mm -hmm. so we have these uh, tra uh, you know trainings on for these waste water treatment plants the trainer the, the, you know the technicians the helpers and even for higher level you know so if you feel for your labs or for your unit you would like to take up some trainings or you like to yeah. assist with us that is what mr pb singh is trying to tell you Right, we right, have right. trainings. We can right. extend it more. Yeah, we can extend it more. But health and safety is something which is there in every every uh, you can say training module which we have developed. Now with COVID coming, we also COVID uh, management rules are also there in our as a in our modules. But specifically mm -hmm. because biomedical waste is very specific, it is yeah. very specific. you can't take it with other 
um, other ways. I think there is a question from Mr. Deepak Rai. I think yeah. uh, Kamal, can you just? I read his question. Uh, uh, there is a provision of returning back uh, the medicines uh, to the manufacturing unit to the pharma industries. Yes, there is a provision. It is there, and we also we also do that timely. Do you have a, do you have a facility somewhere where we can drop these medicines? Yes, yes. They they take back medicines if there is uh, that 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 is governed by the higher authorities, not with us, but okay. uh, they take back. Yes. So over to Kamal or PB Singh. So once once again, I want to thank you and over to Kamal. Yeah, uh, uh, I'm also it's a uh, uh, very very thank you to Pranaji for the yes. excellent uh, presentation. और हम लोग चाहेंगे कि ऐसी चीजें से आप जुड़े रहें और वही जैसा कि अभी धनुजा मैम ने आपको कहा कि हम लोग उस तरह का ट्रेनिंग वगैरह करते हैं तो मैं चाहूंगा कि फ्यूचर में इस तरह का जैसे भी कोई ट्रेनिंग होगा तो हम आपको इनवाइट करेंगे थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच आई एम ऑल्सो डिलाइटेड टू मीट यू ऑल एंड I really uh, because I am I consider myself as an environmentalist, so I just want to work on my level best to help the environment get cleaner, to help each and every person around me. So that is my heart uh, to participate in this. My objective is this only. <laughs> But uh, I'm really glad to hear that I can further participate with you all. I yeah. that would be a very delighting situation. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. And thank you for giving. So we we have a compliment for you. I think Mr. Kamal yeah. can read out that compliment from Mr. Ram. <laughs> Mr. Ram wants to say something. Yeah, please, please. Yes, I mean, uh, ma'am, I've been listening uh, to you throughout. This is not, uh, this is not a subject of uh, of in which I am uh, into, but really inspired by uh, the passion for the subject that you have and uh, for the noble cause. So, congratulations on that, ma'am. Thank you thank so much. It was a pleasure. You. It was a pleasure listening to you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And you are welcome to our council to interact yes. and uh, pick up any activity which you feel where we can join hands and we can, you know, government के साथ तो हम काम करते ही हैं. This is a mandate, you know. And of course, sanitary workers and all that trainings are also, I think, so monitored and done by your medical department only. जितना रिसोर्सेज जितना कैपेसिटी रहेगा उतना ही होता है ना मैम बट आई अंडरस्टैंड बट दे आर डूइंग वेरी गुड जॉब बट ऑन ग्राउंड लेवल हाउ मच पीपल आर फॉलोइंग दैट डिपेंड्स ऑन पर्सन टू पर्सन बिहेवियर दैट नीड टू बी एड्रेस वी नीड टू बी स्ट्रिक्ट विद दो पीपल That is the issue. One of the thing which really hurts me. That it's not pollution. Eh, fir bhi aap nahi kuch action le rahe ho. That is the thing. The basic need, the basic behavior. I think. Yeah. yeah. I know. You see, Yamuna was swimming. Yeah. So much. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and people are just going and taking bath there only now yeah. on the festival. Yeah. Taking taking pictures. Foam <laughs> <laughs> behind. My God. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> But I tell you, it's not here only. I've been in other countries. I had gone to Berlin, and their river was black. So I was telling them, wow. I said, "How come your river is so dirty?" He says, "Ma'am, your Yamuna is also very dirty." I said, "We have acknowledged that Yamuna is dirty, but at least we expected more in those. Even Nile, Nile was so black. I tell you, wow. so this 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 is an attitude. You know, this is this is that because we had done done it earlier, we were not very uh, environmentally conscious that we should dispose of you know in a proper way." so that systems are continuing we have to check and see environment there are so many bodies besides yours the, the you have cpcb you have state pollution control boards all of them have a have a role to play so if everybody was doing what they were required to do then all this would, would not have happened you know uh, uh, and ma'am uh, there is an irony that we treat our rivers as our mothers ganga ma yeah. yamuna ma that is an yeah. irony no yeah yeah we are treating them <laughs> So once again, I thank you, and I uh, you. I think uh, Mr. Kamal would would like to give a bigger thanks. Yeah, <laughs> Kamal. Yeah, and Mr. P. V. Singh, of course. Yes. Yeah. When he connected me to you, I was happy. I said yes, yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, oh, what I say, everyone has already said their things, but of course, ma'am, it's a wonderful thing, and the presentation which you have given 
I mean, it's a tremendous uh, work. This uh, is the uh, mm-hmm. area where we have not even uh, discussed about it. Yeah. Yeah. Even and not even we were not even not, it was out of our thought process basically. Oh <laughs> no no this but yes this but yes this, this is something very good very urgent of course, of course ma'am uh, I think this is this should be the main goal priority should be this yes sir. yes sir and once again thank you so much for thank connecting here ma'am all of you thank, thank you, you. Have a nice day. more than happy to uh, in your next visit whenever you come to skill council of green jobs yeah sure it would be a great pleasure for us yeah sure i'll join sure i'll come to you Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you so much, participants. Thank you. Thanks to all.